Welcome to this Palms demonstration video on the topic of making an impact. In this video, we're going to be examining impact craters. Impact craters are changes in the surface of the Earth, the Moon, or other terrestrial planets made by objects crashing into them. These objects are called impactors and they are usually meteorites. The Moon is covered with impact craters as its very thin atmosphere offers little protection for the surface. The Earth has been bombarded by meteorites for millions of years and it still occurs today. It's often hard to see impact craters due to the surface changes caused by weathering and erosion over long periods of time, or they may even be underwater. It is thought that a massive meteorite was to blame for the mass extinction of dinosaurs, as its impact sent so much debris up into the atmosphere that the weather changed. Most meteorites are reduced in size or completely burned up in our atmosphere due to the effect of friction, but some still make it to the surface where their impact forms a crater. We're going to show you how to make and measure your own impact craters. To make and measure some impact craters, you'll need the following equipment. A large deep tray like a clean kitty litter tray or baking tray. Enough sand to fill the tray and also some balloons. Four balloons plus a few spare in case of breakages. Some kitchen scales. A container or cup to weigh the sand into. A funnel. A measuring tape or very long ruler. A normal size ruler. And it can get a bit messy, so you might like to put down some newspaper or a plastic tablecloth too. We're going to be carrying out a scientific experiment, so we need to consider our variables. In this experiment, we're going to be changing the size of the impactor, so this will be our independent variable. Our dependent variable will be the diameter of the crater, as we will be measuring this, and it depends on our independent variable. Our controlled variables, or the things we will keep the same, include the impactor's drop height and angle, the material in the tray, the impactor materials, the way we measure the crater diameter, and also our method of dropping the impactor. The first thing we need to do is to make our impactors. To do this, we're going to weigh out set amounts of sand, then put the sand into the balloons. We've made four impactors with 80, 120, 160, and 200 grams of sand. Make one at a time as it can be a little tricky filling the balloons, as we'll show you now. Take one of the balloons and give it a good stretch in all directions. Place the balloon on the funnel and pour in a small amount of the sand you've got weighed out. Stretch out the neck of the balloon and then work the sand into the bottom of the balloon. Continue adding small amounts of sand, working it down into the balloon each time. It can sometimes help to squish the balloon on a bench, but be careful not to burst it. When you've added all of the weighed sand, pinch the neck of the balloon to stop it coming out and remove the funnel. Move any remaining sand in the neck down the balloon, making a spherical shape. Then twist and tie off the balloon to finish your impactor. Fill your other balloons in the same way. As the balloons are stretchy, you'll need to shape them into spheres before starting your experiment. Just a tip, don't cut the ends of the balloons as it may cause them to leak and will also change one of your controlled variables. To start your testing, fill the large tray with sand to at least 5 cm in depth and make the surface level and smooth. You can use the ruler to do this. Using the tape measure or long ruler, measure your drop height above the tray and drop the first impactor by releasing it from that height. Carefully remove the impactor, trying not to disturb the sand too much. Look closely where the crater edge is and measure the diameter at the widest point. Write your measurement down in a table. If you find it difficult to see the crater, you might like to try again, this time lightly spraying the surface with water to dampen the sand before dropping the impactor. Flatten and smooth the surface, then do two more trials with the same impactor. Do three trials for each size of impactor you've made. These are the results we got from our trials. Find the average diameter of each impactor's crater by adding the three trial measurements together, then dividing by the number of trials. You might also like to graph your results. Our graph clearly shows that the crater diameter increases as the impactor weight increases, as you would expect. Something to keep in mind is that we notice the balloon impactors flatten on impact, so make sure to reshape them into spheres before doing another trial. A variation on this experiment that you might like to try is what we'll name making a bigger impact. To try this, you'll need the following equipment. A tray, this one doesn't need to be as large as the first experiment, some flour, some polenta, and some cocoa powder. You can use any fine grains or powders, but they need to be different colors from each other. 
you can use more than three if you'd like too. Your impactors this time will be marbles of different sizes or other hard balls will do. You can get some great videos or photos from this experiment, so grab a camera or phone if you have one. This experiment will demonstrate some more information about the structure or anatomy of a crater. We will be looking to see if we can observe any of these parts listed here. You can find out more about crater anatomy by doing some research. To make our testing ground, start by filling the tray with flour about halfway. Then level and smooth the surface. Try not to press down too much. Sprinkle over a thin but roughly even layer of polenta. Then add a thin, even layer of cocoa powder. It's a little easier to use a sieve if you have one. We're going to try dropping the impactors from directly above like we did with the balloons. This can get messy, so work outside or put down a plastic sheet or newspaper. The slow motion video shows how the lower layers can be brought to the top by an impactor hitting the surface. This can happen with meteorites on Earth too. In this photo, we can clearly see the rays of ejected material spread around the crater, as well as polenta and flour brought to the surface as ejector. There is a raised rim around our deep crater and a clear wall. Let's try with the larger impactors. We've left the previous impactor in there to try and not disturb the surface too much. As you can see from this photo, the rays of ejector thrown out when an impactor hits the surface can reach out a long way. Now that you've had a try at these experiments, here's some other variable changes to try. Change the impactors. Use balls of the same size but different materials, or balls of the same material but different sizes. What effect do you think impactors with different surfaces such as fluffy, bumpy or ridged might have? Most meteorites are not smooth spheres. Try dropping the same impactor from different heights and measure the crater diameter. We dropped our impactors directly above the surface, but you could try dropping at an angle by using a cardboard tube or a plank. Thanks for watching this Palms demonstration video. For more fun, hands-on earth science activities, visit our website, palms.edu.au.